Hi everyone! Today I have an exciting project to share with you and this is the uh, bedside caddy. It's got several pockets for you to put your stuff like your iPad, iPhone, laptop, a book, pens, whatever you, you need for the RV. In the past we didn't have space. As you can see the RV has limited space so when we went to bed at night we put all these essentials on the cooker, on the sink, any any uh, open space that we could find which was limited and in the morning it's, it was a real problem. Vertical space is premium and so we came up with this idea of bedside caddies but in a vertical form. If you don't have a, a spot for a velcro you can obviously stick it um, as a bedside caddy as usually done under the mattress and this can be in your bedroom as well where you can stick it under the mattress. However, we do have velcro and so we can stick it like that top and bottom and it's very secure it's not going to move anywhere and the beauty is you can also charge your devices while it's in here. So the first step would be to get a fabric which is 21 inches by 26 inches. 21 inches wide by 26 inches. And you want to put um, some kind of foam backing so that the fabric will be stiff and it will have some body. So I use Perlon uh, fusible foam and because it's fusible I just ironed it to the fabric, to the, to the uh, wrong side of the fabric. And then I just drew some um, lines across, three inch lines um, vertically and horizontally or you could do diamond shape if you like uh, so that uh, it will give a, a nice um, touch and a nice finish to to get the pelon uh, affixed to the fabric. You don't have to be too particular about this because uh, about half of the fabric will be covered by the pockets. So um, I'm, I'm just going to do straight stitching. I'm not a quilter but uh, it's pretty straightforward and anyone can do this. So I'm going to just show you how to do the quilting and I find uh, it's always good to start in the middle because it will even out, the creases would, would be uh, less obvious when you start in the middle. I'm, I might be doing it um, you know, against what um, professional quilters may advise um, but it's enough for my purposes and it has worked well for me. So I'm just going to finish off the quilt. I'll get back to you on the video. It's been about six minutes and um, the quilting's been done. Essentially it's a three inch squares but if you want to go for diamond shape go ahead or you want to go for uh, free motion or whatever pattern that your, heart, uh, that your heart desires, go for it. For me, I'm happy with the uh, three inch squares because I like things done fast and I don't really think that the quilt is going to be making much of the, a difference uh, or rather the pattern of the quilt is going to be making much of a difference to this project. Now the other things that you would need are the pockets. So I've got um, two pockets here. So the pockets will obviously need a lining. So the first pocket is the, the desired size is um, 11 inches and I've put some um, interfacing and I've ironed it on. Uh, they're fusible and this is the lining for it. What you do is uh, in the process of sewing you put the two right sides together and um, I'll show you how to do it in a bit. Um, and then the second pocket which goes over it is 7 inches. So the end product is going to be looking like this uh, with 
section and then you will section off the pockets and this part of it will go under the bed and this part will hang at the side of your bed um, and then you can put your iPads and your um, phones in between. So I'll now show you how to do the pockets. So um, for the first pocket, you'll have the lining of the same size or the same dimensions. And then what you do is you would sew the two right sides together. Ideally, you should pin it around to make sure that uh, they're all regular. So I, I have done quite a few of this, so I'm, I'm not going to pin it too much. Um, but yeah, just the sides of it. Okay, let's start the sewing. So the two right sides together. And um, I usually like to leave half an inch uh, sewing allowance. So I find that it's easy to do. Um, so because we are going to put this on another piece of fabric, it's good to have a little bit less than half an inch. So when you do that half an inch for the final bit, uh, your first bit of stitches won't show. So maybe um, uh, do the 3 8 of an inch. Okay. Back stitch, back stitch, and, then, and also back stitch. So your stitch is stronger. After you do that, you would turn it to the reverse, and you would press the fabric. Always, always remember to iron. Don't. Um, don't forget that bit because it would make your stitching from amateur to a little bit more professional. I like to show a bit of the lining. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just let the lining stick out a bit. It, it just gives a, a pretty touch to the fabric at the end. So let's iron it now. Okay, let's do this now. So you'll see the lining popping out a little bit. Now, when I stitched um, the uh, quilting and in our regular st stitch, I usually use uh, a two and a half stitch line. But but when you're doing a top stitch, this is called a top stitch. I'd like to go for a bigger stitch so your stitches would show, and I'm going to be doing four a four. Uh, for a uh, stitch line and I'm going to place my needle right onto where the two pieces of fabric meet and back stitch, back stitch again and voila you got the first piece done. How easy is that? Now you attach your first pocket to the main fabric but the problem uh, with this is the pocket becomes too deep and it's very hard for you to reach your items. So that's a trick here. What you do is you would um, you would sew this part maybe about two inches to the main fabric and then you put your second piece on. So when you when you stuff your stuff in, it will only reach that that two inch mark or three inch mark. I like it sticking out a bit and I can charge it while it's in this organizer. So I think a good way to measure would be three inches from the bottom. I'll sew across three inches from the bottom. So the pocket would be eight inches deep. So although we started off with 11 inches, we're going to have an eight inch deep pocket. And we're going to have three pockets with the iPad right in the middle. So I'm going to have the iPad measuring nine in, eight, uh, eight and a half inches and then um, two pockets at the side. Why do I have the iPad in the middle? It's because it will give a good balance. Now, so what do I do? We're going to Get the center point of the pocket, 
and because the pocket is the same width as the main part of the organizer or the backing part, the center point is of the pocket would be sufficient. So this would be the center point of the pocket and on either side I would measure 4.25 inches. So that would be eight and a half inches. Okay, so then get my ruler, use my erasable marker or pen. This would go off when you iron. The lines will go off when you iron, so it's not permanent. Um, make sure that you don't use a permanent marker. So that it, it measures four and a quarter and another four and a quarter here and across. Okay, and then we want it three inches from the bottom. So let me do the bottom piece, three inches. Now I'm going to use a pen here because this is not going to show in the end product and I can see it clearly. So I'm going to use a pen and you can see it clearly as well. So first step, sew this on. Because you can sew the three inch with the whole pocket on but it just wouldn't look nice on the outside with the stitch line. So I'm going to use clips to hold the two pieces together so it will, the fabric won't move as I sew. And pins won't work when you're using foam. And I don't like to use pins because I often poke myself. Okay, very good. Now that that's done, you can do the main pocket. Now, this part is going to be a tension point because whenever you put your things in the pocket, there's a bit of a tension. So what you want to do is flex it several times so that it becomes, it has some strength. I like to do uh, my pockets from bottom to the top because um, when you do it one way, it, it makes everything very even or you can do from the top to the bottom, but don't... Um, do the top to the bottom and then the bottom to the top. Just make sure that whatever you do, it's uniform. Again. Okay. Very good. your first pocket done. Now for the second pocket which is which goes at the bottom of this and again I'm going to do the same steps as I've done before so I'm not going to actually show you how I, I do the lining but it's going to be exactly the same two right sides together turn it around and then have a little bit of a, a lip showing the lining and I'm going to do the same pocket lines as well. But this time, I'm going to put my iPhone in. So the, I don't want my iPhone to get lost. So I'm going to have, um, I'm again going to measure so that my iPhone will just nicely stick out. And for that, I'm going to stitch two inches across on the lining fabric and and have four and a half inches inches sticking out because the top of the iPhone will stick out and at night you can see that. All right, and I'll come back to you after this is done. Always remember to backstitch whatever you do. It gives strength. Isn't it pretty? So again, I am going to um, I'm going to do the same thing for the um, for the lining so that the pocket is not too deep and the iPhone will fit just 
nicely. Very good, that's done. Now for the main pocket. Everything will align nicely. Again, I am going to start and then the same stitch line right down okay the reason for that is if I try to make the pockets different sizes it's going to affect my main pocket okay and finally the last bit okay so we have completed the pockets Now what we have to do is we we'll try it. You can even have more pockets if you like for your pins, for your torches. It's entirely up to you. Custom it to what you would like for your purposes. Okay, so now I am going to do the last bit of the pocket. Sew it up and then, and then we'll have to top stitch the bottom before we put the backing. This is so that um, it's just easier when you, before you put the backing. Alright? Okay, very good. Now, I'm going to do a tacking stitch for this uh, the, the th three layers, the two pockets and the frame before I put the uh, the back on. When I say tacking, I mean make your stitch as big as possible so it's it's just so that the, the fabric is held together. You're not holding it by pins, you're just holding it by the stitches. And because my top is longer than the fold, I'm going to sew from the bottom so I know that I've got all the pieces sewn together, including the lining. Okay, so I'm going to sew from the bottom. Very good. So now I've got all the pieces sewn together. It's pretty much done. Most of the work has been done. Now I've got to neaten everything up and make sure that I'm covering the back. Now, a lot of people, when they do quilting, they like to do the back together. So when they quilt, they quilt with the back. But from my experience, I, don't, I find it um, more difficult and there'd be a lot of puckering and creases at the back so I actually would like to have it as a separate piece. Now for this part you have you can do one of the two methods you can just sew the back with the right side um, on top and then you would uh, after that you do binding to close up the unfinished bits or you could do another way which is two right sides together, then leave the top and the bottom unstitched so you could do your binding on the on the top and by, uh, bottom but you you would sew the sides with the lining on and I'll show you what I mean. The thing about sewing is you always got to be mindful at every step and, and that's a good thing because if you forget something, you ha you'll you have to uh, um, pick the stitches and redo again. That's a lot of work, so do it right the first time. Back stitch again, and of course. Now, if your machine cannot handle so many layers, then use a walking foot. Um, I have a walking foot, but I'm not using it today because my machine, being a vintage machine, it tends to be more sturdy and it can hold more layers. So now I'm going to do, so I've, I've finished the sides and I've turned it and I've done the top stitch. Okay, and so I, we still have two unfinished sides. Now this, you fold it in so the frayed sides won't show and you would put it on the fabric 
like so. Now this time you'll need to use this, okay? And you clip it around. Just the length. So what I've done is I've stitched it and I've turned it to the reverse and I've pinned it or clipped it. Make it a little bit tight when you clip it so it won't move anywhere. And then I'll give it a stitch line. Again, remember your because just now I did some top stitching so I changed um, the stitch line uh, or the stitch position so now I've gone back to two and a half and I'm going to try to use my same stitch line the top already so it's done now if you're going to put it uh, in the caravan you might want to use velcro at the back you just sew your velcro on the back the top and the bottom and you secure it to the caravan if you're going to put it under your bed you just put this part under the mattress you just the mattress over that bit and hang this on a bit and you can put all your stuff in there it's a wonderful project and it didn't take us very long thank you if you like this thumbs up and subscribe and uh, i look forward to sharing another easy project with you bye for now this is cecilia signing out <laughs>